Hey, welcome to Gold Scratch and uh, welcome back to Gold Scratch because we have not made a video for quite a while, more than a month anyway. Just got other things to do. And, but the purpose of this video is uh, one part one of two parts. And this is a 400 small block Chev engine. If you've watched my videos before, you've seen it. I made various videos uh, during the process of constructing this engine. And we have a date with Daryl Waters this Saturday, which is June the 10th, uh, to dyno this engine. So uh, we've been waiting for this date. Daryl's pretty busy this time of year, so we're finally getting on his dyno this Saturday. And so we're not just going to dyno it. We're going to dyno it twice. We're going to dyno it once the way it is. This is a, the cam in this engine is a 268H hydraulic flat tappet uh, comp cam. And I've got it installed on the 106 center line right now, which is the recommended center line. We're going to dyno it, put it on the dyno, yeah, find the air fuel ratio, timing, optimize the tune, get it to where we think we pretty much got as much as it can get. And then we're going to shut it down uh, and advance the cam four degrees. So how in the heck are we going to do that? Well, there's two big issues uh, that enable us to do that. And one is the fact when I built the engine, I used the Cloy's adjustable timing gear. So I can actually adjust the timing with this simple tool right here, a quarter inch uh, Allen wrench. Uh, adjusting the timing is the easy part, getting at it is the hard part. So, uh, and I also have a timing cover that has a removable plate on the front of it. And when we do this, we're gonna make a detailed video of the entire process from shutdown to startup. So you can see all that. Once I get at it, I can adjust the timing with this tool, put it back together, and run it on the dyno uh, again. And we're going to see whether it makes performs better with on the center line or with the camshaft advance four degrees. So just quickly, typically for a street car where you need low end power, low end torque, advancing the cam will sometimes help. And how does it do that? It does it because it gets that intake valve opening a little earlier than it would have been. And at low RPM, you don't have mass, much mass airflow. So it helps the intake valve get working. And it also closes the intake valve. Instead of closing it at 61 degrees, it'll close it at 57 degrees. It traps a little more compression, raises your mean effective pressure, and should give you a little more torque at low speed. So typically, for a street engine, you want to, have, want to be advanced usually at least, or, or on centerline. If it's a drag racing engine or a circle track engine where you launch over 5,000 RPM or a circle track engine where you take the green at over 5,000 RPM, you don't really care what's going on at 2,500 RPM. So you typically would retard the cam. So let's get by that. So we're gonna do this on the dyno. Dyno time is not cheap. Even though we love Daryl and Daryl loves us, he still charges me to use his dyno. And when we're working on the engine, we're paying for dyno time. So we gotta do this efficiently. And we're gonna do that by detailed planning and working effectively. So uh, the plan is from shutdown to start up, less than 60 minutes, less than one hour. Advance the cam and have the engine running again. So I've talked about detailed planning before. So this is my planning sheet. It's, I spelled it Gantt chart. I think I spelled Gantt wrong. It should be two N's. So if you're interested in this subject, you can Google Gantt and you will find lots of answers. So it's a way of organizing your work efficiently. So to make sure on a, what's called critical path scheduling, where you make sure all the items that you're working on that are critical are done in the proper sequence because any of those items that take longer will extend the overall time. So I've actually allocated a time for every uh, component of the project and shut down the startup. And also, as I said, before you start, you need to know the parts, the tools, the procedure, every step you're gonna take. And have I detailed every step on this chart and it adds up, it just happens to add up to 60 minutes. So that's our target. When we do the dyno, do the video on the dyno, we'll have a stopwatch running. So we'll be under the clock. We're not going to go crazy, but we're going to work, try to work effectively. And so I'm going to be, you need resources to do that. So I'm going to use my good friend, Tom Winkler and uh, Alex Vendrig. One on each side of the engine. I'll be on the front of the engine. 
And when we, once we shut down, I got to get the water pump off, the pulleys off. Uh, I got to pull the harmonic balancer out. I, I don't think I have to take it completely off. If I pull it out far enough to get at that little inspection plate, take the inspection plate out. While I'm doing that, Alec and Tom will be draining the water out of the block, taking the valve covers off and backing off all the rocker arms because you cannot advance the cam with valve spring pressure on the cam. You have to have the valve springs uh, unloaded. So all the rocker arms have to get backed off. By the time they get that done, I should be ready to advance the cam. So I got to take the three cam bolts, loosen them off, rotate the cam. I already know where I'm going. I've marked the mark on the, on the timing gear when I put it together. So that won't take very long. Tighten the three cam bolts back up, take them one out at a time out and put Loctite on them, put them back in and torque them. Put the cover plate back on, the water pump back on, pull the harmonic balancer back on. By that time, they'll be ready for me to adjust the valves. One of the important things, we have to make sure we know where the distributor is. We'll take the cap off quickly. You don't have to start at number one, but we have to know where it is because uh, we've marked the harmonic balancer every 90 degrees with uh, numbers. And of course, as you know, the harmonic balancer goes around twice for every time the camshaft goes around. So once we know where we're at, these cylinders, the firing order is 18436572. So one and six come up together, eight and five come together, four and seven come together. So the balancer is marked. Once I know where that is for adjusting the valves, I start at number one, turn the balancer 90 degrees, do number eight, turn the balancer 90 degrees, do number four, and so on. So that won't take very long to readjust the valves. Once I get number seven done, that's the last one on the passenger, on the driver's side. Uh, Tom or Alec will put this valve cover back on. I go over and do this one, put the valve cover back on, tell Daryl to turn the water on and we'll start her up and run it again. So we'll have the clock running, should be interesting. We're looking forward to it, it's gonna be fun. And uh, three guys working together so one of the other important parts of planning is to have the tools that you need and be ready for it. So we've got our little setup here. So if you've ever gone to the dentist and had a dental procedure done or even surgery done, uh, when they start the process, they have a setup, know, they know the procedure and they have the exact tools and parts that they need to do the job. I guess they call them instruments. We call them tools. And so that's what I've done here. We will bring this tray to the dyno with us and all the tools and parts that we need. So taking the balancer off, that's the puller, putting the balancer back on, that's the balancer install tool. I'm actually going to change the balancer bolt. This longer one, you can buy these with a longer hex on it and that makes it easier to turn the crankshaft so it doesn't slip, otherwise it's vulnerable to slipping. This wrench is going to be turning the balancer. Uh, we got Allen wrenches to take the valve covers off, install the valve covers. Uh, the other one, of course, to actually advance the cam. Spare valve cover gaskets, just in case. Probably won't need them, but just in case, we got spare valve cover gaskets. The water pump should go back on without changing the gaskets, but if they do get damaged, uh, I got spare valve cover or water pump gaskets. Spare Permatex. Uh, this is the Loctite for Loctiting the uh, cam bolts. Uh, big impact to take the big bolts out and the small impact for running stuff in and out. Two pails to drain the block. This is actually two pails, the timing, timing light and paper towels. So if we got this planned right, Daryl's got tools and he's happy to lend them to us, but we should not have to touch them. We will try to do the whole job procedure uh, with these tools and that helps us to work effectively. So I think I covered that off. Planning is important, being ready, having the right tools and parts. Guys that know what they're doing is nice, and these two guys that Tom and Alex do. And we're going to have this choreographed as much as we can, and let's see how successful we are. So watch for part two. That's this Saturday, June 10th. We'll be doing the video of it, and we'll get it published as soon as we can and put these two videos together. Just quickly, this 350, this 400, I will describe it again. It's a... Uh, it's a 400 block standard bore. Uh, we've got an Eagle crankshaft, uh, uh, Keith Black pistons in it. It's got uh, aftermarket aluminum heads 
uh, night, it's got the summit air, air gap intake manifold and the 268H hydraulic flat tappet camshaft, which this engine is going in. Uh, customer is um, Pete DeMello, and Pete has a full size Chevrolet truck. And, and so it's got an automatic transmission and a standard rear end. So the emphasis, as usual, when I build street engines, is on low end, mid range torque, throttle response. And that's why we want to see whether advancing the cam is going to help us or not. So it's ready to go. It's actually been run. I'm just waiting for uh, Pete's bringing me his different valve covers. These are my shop valve covers. I want to start up, make sure that's good, no leaks. And then it's coming off my test stand after that and be delivered to Daryl's Dyno next week. And we'll see you there. Thanks for watching Gold's Garage.